lectures on one of the most important challenges that world in general, but Asia in particular, is going to be facing over the next two to three decades. The way the aging has progressed in Asia, and that is good news, at least with my age, I can say it's good news. People are living longer. Uh -huh. uh, the, it also means that how Asia is going to uh, address this particular challenge will determine how the world will address that, that challenge. Last time in the first lecture, we had talked about the uh, that Japan has always been associated with the flying geese theory of development, where Japan was the first Asian country to become developed, and the others followed in its wake, the NIEs and then the, uh, then the Southeast Asian tigers and, and others. But we also know that just as Japan took the lead in economic development and in industrialization, it has also taken the lead in aging. So its experience is very relevant for rest of Asia, both in terms of the positive lessons about how to meet those challenges as well as about some of the pitfalls that await the rest of the countries. In the first lecture, Mr. Motani had gone through the Japanese aging experience and some of the policies. Uh, today, he is going to talk about the future of Singapore, China, and India. Uh, after the enthusiastic reception he received last time, he doesn't need any further introduction today, but let me only mention that he is one of the most prolific Japanese speakers. Uh, last year, he had given about 400 presentations uh, to many, many diverse groups. So not only we are going to learn a lot from him, but one of the things I took away last time is how to be a public speaker. <laughs> yes. So That's the only with, with, yes. with that introduction, I'll uh, invite Mr. Mutani to make thank his you presentation. Very much. Uh, thank you for so uh, kind uh, introduction to me. I'm Mutani, Kosuke Mutani uh, from DBJ Singapore, uh, temporarily working in Singapore. Then uh, uh, I've been here for 10 months, and uh, I'll go, I have to it's now almost fixed that I have to go back by the end of the March. And uh, it's just one year, kind of sabbatical for me. And uh, I start uh, doing lecture again in Japan. And the first uh, reservation in Japan is I have to go to visit a very small local city in Gumma Prefecture, as noted, Tokyo, at April 7th. That would be my first <laughs> returning job. But this is the main event uh, of, for me during my stay in Singapore. I'm very, very honored, uh, so happy to have these chances to give lectures to you and make discussion. Uh, last time, I, we had a full of audience, and I'm pretty, afraid, pretty much afraid of uh, losing some audiences. But today, it looks like uh, we have more. Uh, we, I really thank you very much for coming. And uh, today, I will have a little more time for your question than last time. Today, basically, I tell you a very rough figure. And uh, today, it's not a research presentation. It's uh, just, a I've just used the research of the United Nations. I didn't add anything. Uh, so uh, I just present you the fact. It's like a newscaster. Uh, newscaster actually don't know much about the word, uh, the figure, but I, just like newscaster, not a news, but uh, maybe you don't know that. <laughs> My family is very favorite. Uh, you know, it's, it's my family's favorite. The news, at Channel Five, is so, so so funny, in every Tuesday. I think we should. Uh, you don't know it, okay? Uh, but, uh, 
please uh, just learn how to make a presentation or maybe learn how your country will become like. Uh, I, I say here the Singapore, China, and India. I'm sorry, just I just uh, picked up some several large ones and also the hometown of us. But also I made a projection about the same, I same, made a same graph for Europe and the United States, Korea. Korea is a very, very particular concern for Japanese and also some other countries. And I, I show you some figure about Southeast Asian country, especially last time Dr. Asher told me that the Vietnam and Indonesia have a uh, similar tendency. They are maturing before they, they are demographically maturing before economically maturing. So that's a huge problem. But also China has a lot of similar tendency. And uh, so I'll tell you some figures. Okay, do you remember the last time I, t I told, tell you, showed you this one? Uh, this is the Japan, okay? Silver tsunami in Japan. 50 years ago, uh, 60 years ago, uh, 70 years ago before the war, 60 years ago, 50 years ago, 40 years ago, 30, 20, 10, now, 10 years later, 20 years later, 30, 40. So somebody is going, passing through from the left to the right. This is a baby boomer of Japan uh, who was born right after the war. Uh, right after the war. And uh, I have to be very careful to say that, but uh, Japan had the baby boom earlier than other Asian countries. Okay, and last time I explained this because of the war, then somebody, it's something sometimes insulting things, so I have to be very careful, but just tell the fact that Japan had earlier baby boom earlier than the Asian country, although it made a huge problem in Asia, Japan recovered first. I feel very sorry, especially about Korea. Korea was at war this time, China too. But anyway, this, this baby boomer, of course, became older, becomes older. And this is the Asian part, without dying. You see the height of this baby boomer. They don't die. <laughs> <laughs> they are very healthy, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe full of ill, but they don't die. <laughs> now they are at 60s, okay? So gradually, they start dying a bit. Yeah, unfortunately, it's like, uh, in Japan, for those less than 70 years old, larger chance of committing suicide than dying by, for some kind of illness. It's a problem with harakiri culture. But anyway, uh, now they gradually die, but eventually, many of them will survive after 85 years old. And 85 years and old and over will become the majority of Japanese society after 40 years. People say, well, it's a declining birth rate that makes aging problem. Well, partly that's true. But don't forget the other very important factor. Actually, baby boom produces aging problem later because so many babies will become so many senior citizens 70 years later. Okay? People always forget about this. And people just think, if you just increase the birth rate, you can just improve the problem or resolve the problem. No, 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 no. You can mitigate somehow, but you will not be able to resolve the problem. Actually, it's not a problem. It's a healthy senior citizens living forever. <laughs> it's, it's not a problem. It's a human's goal, okay? You too. When you become 70, you don't want to die. If you're healthy, of course, you won't live long, and it's a... Pimping kori is the Japanese word last time I mentioned. Pimping kori. You are very pimping. Pimping is very healthy. And all, one day, you get older than 100 years, then all of a sudden you feel like sleeping and you die. <laughs> kori. Pimping kori is the ideal, ideal situation for Japanese, may, oh, for, also for many Asians. But not so many people become like that. Actually, pimping, ill, and disappear. It's a usual situation. So we have huge increase of medical care, and welfare expense. At the same time, we are having less kids, so we are now experiencing real decrease of working age population. 86.2 million was a peak 10 years ago. Within these decade, this decade, 
we already lost five million. People say, well, Japan should introduce foreign laborers, of course, but is it possible to welcome five million foreign laborers? It's equivalent to Singaporean population. Where out will they come from? It's one quarter of Australian. You know, if we add one more million to Singapore, it's a big thing. But if we add one million in Japan, to Japan, it's nothing. Basically, it doesn't work. It's just a small portion. In Chinese proverb, it says it's just one, one, one small bit of water into the ocean. <laughs> okay? So that's a real problem we are facing. Then this today, what, what about China? Will China have a similar thing? If, it's, if so, do, can they rely on foreign immigrants? Maybe not at all. Everybody is relying on China about you know, exporting people. No, 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 no. Now they are seeing the similar situation. Now what about Singapore? If the Singapore already exceeding Japan in terms of per capita GDP, well, it's fluctuating according to the currency exchange rate. But anyway, the per capita GDP growth rate in Singapore is larger than Japan. Anyway, it will be the richest country in Asia in the two, one or two years, okay? So will the Singapore have the same problem? Yes. And you're introducing a lot of foreign immigrants. Yes. Will that save the problem? I'll show you the real figure, what's going on here. And today, I applied just very primitive figure number from the United Nations homepage. And uh, I have to apologize. I think I found many funny points about the, this projection. <laughs> Maybe it's uh, mechanically made, now well, not well customized. I mean, so it may contain a lot of wrong projection. And basically, I sensed it's very, these projections are very optimistic because they are setting life expectancy shorter than reality. Okay. Actually, Singaporean life expectancy is becoming long, pretty very rapidly. Now, India, average Indian life expectancy is very short, but it's becoming longer. And if you just classify the people, if you just find that middle class, it's a lot longer than lower class, I think. And in China, too. So the, 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 all the projections I introduce is from the United Nations homepage. You can accept the same thing, OK? But just my, from my point of view, it looks, they look a little optimistic. And Dr. Asher knows quite exactly what they are, but I don't argue about those. I use this United Nations projection just because they apply the same way to calculate all the countries. So you can just compare countries, OK? If you, you apply this one standard to calculate the projection, population projection of all the country, you can just compare it, OK? So it's rational to use this for me. But if you're a specialist, please calculate yourself. OK, it's a Singapore uh, 40 years ago. This shows the age, and uh, this shows the number of the population. It's in terms of 1,000. And total population in Singapore is about less than, a little more than 1.7 million, OK? There were only 70,000 70, senior citizens <laughs> 40 years ago. 70,000, uh, less than the population of Woodlands, I think. Uh, 80, 90, 20,000, and 10. You know what's happening? You see the yellow part, those who were born before independence? Oh, they are actually increasing. Why? Do they divide themselves into two <laughs> a night? No, these is the foreign immigrants. OK, a lot of foreigners come to live in Singapore. One thing I like this, about this United Nations projection, they include the foreign immigrants, residents. I mean, they, they're not only Singaporean, but includes all the people living in Singapore. So uh, according to this United Nations projection, uh, the population of Singapore at two year two, 2010 is 486, I don't know, 4.86 million. Not so different from real euro figure. It's actually 4.99. But this projection is 4.86, so it's pretty accurate. Okay, it includes foreigners living here like me. Okay, so what's gonna what you see what's going on next 40 years? Are those foreigners will leave the country after they get old? I don't think so. I mean, 
definitely, this country has better medical service than most of the other countries. Definitely are better than the United States, and uh, probably than, than Japan. So uh, United Nations says, to year 20, 20, 30, 40, 50. This is something we've already seen. Years, 85 years old and over, will become the majority of the country in the year, same year, year 2050. So, as I told you, economically, Singapore already surpassing Japan. Same things happening in terms of demography. It just corresponds. But you also have not a baby boomer here still, but they are now over 55. And you have less kids, but they're seeing, expecting some increase of the kids because those people, those people now under their high teens, you have a lot of high teens now. They will have babies somehow. If they don't, you will not have this peak. Uh, this peak, these people, these people, you know, made those people born. And the, the grandchildren, a smaller number. But after that, these people will become parents. So kids will become less, but they're assuming about the same nearly 2.0 birth rate, or they are expecting a lot more foreign immigrants, young guys coming to Singapore. Still, you cannot do anything about having a lot more elder people. Okay, you understand that. Uh, so what about the effect of the foreign immigrants? This is the one I really wanted to make. And this is, okay, uh, this is this year, today, uh, this year, okay? If Singaporean didn't welcome foreign residents like Japan, then you remain to be the same as uh, the population of 1990. If those who already lived in Singapore in 1990, 20 years ago, just they still live in Singapore without dying, getting out. <laughs> Nobody's coming out. Then the population should be this level. Okay? Those who lived in Singapore in 1990 become 20 years older this year. Okay? And if they don't die, they don't come, they don't go out, then population level should be this line. But in reality, you have tons of more people all those increase uh, due to foreign immigrants. And in general, Singaporeans are going out of their country, actually. You get a little bored. Young people won't go out once. So those generations, actually, you're decreasing. But it's fully compensated by foreign immigrants. So now you think foreign immigrants policy works so perfectly to increase working age population. That's good. And what's going to happen in the next 20 years? Uh, OK, I'll show you two, 30 years later figure. Uh, why did I choose the 20, year 20, 2040? Because yeah, that was the most easy, easy one to understand, more better than 2050 and 30. Anyway, this is the original Singaporean residents at 1990. Actually, if they become 75 years, many of them die. But this just assumes Singaporean never dies. <laughs> So the same level, people, uh, uh, th th those who lived in Singapore became 50 years older than they are still alive. Then you see a lot more elder people than the original Singaporean. Why? Foreign residents remain to be here. Of course, introduction to foreign residents, not labor, okay? Foreign students doing some work and making a lot of money or bringing in money, of course, will become senior citizens later. Uh, it's quite natural, and it's, it's pretty ridiculous to say this at the graduate school and university. It's like uh, elementary school calculation. But in Japan, I, spy, I meet so many people who ignore this. <laughs> so I just show you reality. And why do I notice this? Because the Tokyo had the same thing. Tokyo's population became three times more than before after the rapid growth of the economy. 
basically introducing so many populations from outside of the Tokyo. But now, they are now experiencing the largest increase of senior citizens more than any other city in the world. Because those who once a young people, when it came to Tokyo, is now a senior citizen, very good senior citizens. Very, very polite, not rude like Singaporean taxi driver. <laughs> uh, some, some. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, some, but uh, they are just getting a little sick. Okay, this is the result. But, but if you just, just don't continue introducing, then you will just, you know, if you stop Im Im uh, introducing immigration, then you will just have this, bur this expense with less taxpayer. So uh, you, the situation becomes severer. It's like uh, once you start borrowing money, you cannot stop it. Not borrowing. But okay, this is a, a comparison of Singapore and Japan. Pretty difficult to understand, but the, I, I'll show the same table. I use the same thing three times, so I explain just once. Please understand. This is the my own way to analyze this, but I, I think it's pretty creative, very basic. But okay, this is the. I, I showed you the, uh, the same thing the other time, too. Uh, senior age population divided by working age population. So if it's more like uh, 75, you mean uh, if you have 100 working age people, then you have 75 senior citizens. <laughs> okay? And if you're just 10, if you have 100 people working age, just 10 senior citizens, very, very small burden. And you're going all very rapidly. A red line is Japan. Uh, projection of the United Nations, not Japanese government. I, because I wanted to use the same projection with the same assumption. Okay? And green is Singapore. Isn't it the same? It's just like uh, maybe it's a, there's some kind of hidden intention of God or Singaporean, or Jewish, or Japanese or something. But anyway, it's exactly the same. For me, it looks very similar. Only one thing, Singapore stops here and fluctuates here. Why? Well, the United Nations is pretty rude. They are expecting your life expectancy is shorter than Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason. But in reality, it's almost the same. OK, we are among the top three in the world. Don't, don't, don't think Chinese are so uh, just American. I mean, they care a lot about health than usual American or Australian, OK? How about Indian? Oh, it's a mystic way of power. They live very long in healthy situation. Anyway, Asian show the same situation. I think maybe year 2050 will go come like this, I'm sure. But anyway, it's about the same. Used, it used to be very, very young country. It was full of kids. This is the young age divided by working age. And at 1970, Singapore was relatively poor because they had to spend a lot of money to raise kids, bring, about, bring, out, bring kids. Uh, but later, you are enjoying prosperity just right now because you don't have so many kids. Even though you are spending a lot of money per kid, but still, in this total society, your expense to the education getting less. And you know, I found many schools in Singapore already closed and converted to some business application thing, the community center. Same thing we can have, you have seen in Tokyo too. Then the kids level will remain the same, but your senior citizen will increase. Okay, this is Singapore. What about China? China is one point different. They cannot introduce immigrants. Only one case, somehow India will immigrate to China. <laughs> but maybe that, that will not be the case, or vice versa. I'm not sure. So Chinese population is so huge, OK? Whatever amount of the people coming to China, it doesn't count. You understand that? <laughs> so <laughs> what's, what's going to happen in China? OK, it's a 1970. Uh, SGP, single ch ch children policy. Single child policy. I'm sorry, just make it just, just the, uh, my own word. <laughs> single child policy before single child policy. Uh, 80. They started single child policy at 97, but it, it was not working in 80 yet. 
90. Oh, single children policy didn't work. Why? Because the parent number of the parents is large. You know, why the kids decreased? Uh, because, uh, well, it maybe before the single children policy, actually children decreased. But after that, it increased. And the government really, really thought, oh, it's a problem. You have to, we have to be very strict about the policy. Yeah. So the effect comes down, comes out. <laughs> but it's just because the parents decreased. The real change occurred after economic prosperity started. Well, I think this projection is very, very optimistic about the birth rate of China. It's obviously too high. I mean, in reality, kids are decreasing a lot faster than this, I believe. But I have no proof. I just continue using this. Just, just by this very optimistic projection, you see the real, real problem of the world. China's problem is the world's problem, of course. China's prosperity is the world's prosperity. I think China's resolution of the environment will resolve the world environment, <laughs> uh, except India. India will also shoot the dead. But you see, this baby boomer will die at 65. No, Chinese people live longer than usual national people, I think. So, well, I think it's, this projection also commits another pro mistake that Chinese, they assume Chinese baby boomer will die pretty quick. <laughs> but in reality, because of the economic prosperity, okay, and a very good care of your health, a mystic way of training yourself, not so many Chinese people will die so fast. But just according to this very, very optimistic, or realistic, uh, unrealistic projection, the Chinese senior citizen population will start increasing right now. We see the real increase. And also, it's faster than I expected. Even though the, they are expecting high birth rate, higher birth rate than reality, I think, the working age population will be at peak only 10 years later. Well, I thought it should be about year 20, 2030, but uh, the United Nations says it's 2020. Even though they're assuming relatively flat birth. So, China will see real reduction of the working age population, and that will save maybe the country, the world, the environment, I think, and also per capita prosperity will come to China, I think, I hope. I'm sure. But in total, okay, Chinese people will not have more room to offer immigrants to outside, I think. I mean, or actually, Chinese, overseas Chinese, maybe will have larger chance to go back to their father's country to compensate the decrease of the working age population. Here, the same figure I attached, I added China. Japan, Singapore, and China is blue. Uh, there's no meaningful color, I'm sorry. But, uh, because Japan is a bit, at the autumn season, so uh, it's red. You see, uh, I just cut out this part. But see, very, very similar structure. Uh, I mean, China, it's Singapore and China, very similar. Actually, it was not so different at the year 1970. But all of a sudden, Singapore has become a developed country so fast. Phew. And you start, you, you have longer life expectancy so fast, and you come, phew, this way. But China maybe will follow the same track. Uh, there's about 40 years difference or 30 years difference between Japan and China. 10 years difference from Singapore. And why do they project just all of a sudden they stop? So they are expecting shorter life expectancy in China. But I think this will, this will be longer in reality. OK, do you understand my point? India. Uh, well, this projection is very, very optimistic, so I wrote it. 
why optimistic? Well, basically, this projection is based on the data maybe 10 years ago. So it's not really, it doesn't, it's not counting the current economic reform and liberalization in India. So uh, they are expecting a lot higher birth rate than reality, I think. And also they are expecting a lot lower life, ex shorter life expectancy than reality. Uh, but India, I will show it quick. Well, so it's very moderate. Not so crazy up and downs because there, maybe the assumption works large part. I mean, uh, there are so many unknown things, so <laughs> they just make very simple assumption that basically people get older <laughs> until they die. Then, you see, they will continue increasing. Uh, see, continue to see the increase of the working age population, but it's becoming almost matured. No increase at later stage. By the way, senior age never stop increasing. And until this year, they really didn't have any senior age, not so many, very small number. Right now, they have tons of senior age. And here I compare Japan, Singapore, and India. I cut, them, cut it down this far. Okay. So uh, there's about 50 years to 40 years difference between India and Singapore and Japan. But amazingly, amazingly, there, India also seeing the same track. Before the liberalization, they were basically staying in the same ground. <laughs> but after the liberalization, people just, you know, start economically working economically. Then uh, you have the same track. And it, I had this line. This, uh, this is the uh, equation that y equals minus x plus somebody, some alpha. If this, this line comes under, that means the you work in age population is larger portion larger. And if you this comes this way, your working age portion is smaller. You see, the Singapore is at peak right now. You have the largest working age population portion right now. You will lose it because your number of the senior will increase. But India will be at peak about 30 years later, but their peak is a little backwards according to this uh, projection. What does this mean? Well, they are, they are foreseeing more kids still will be born in the India, but by that time, senior citizens will also increase. So working age has a sandwiched, will be sandwiched by pressure of the requiring young guys and the required, not requiring, I'm not sure, but requiring senior citizens. So uh, budget thing will be a little more difficult in India than in Singapore. I, I'm, what about all the other Southeast Asian countries? Well, I just, actually I made this, but I didn't have time to make those. And I, I show you just the, this thing. Well, this is, the, Dr. Asher told me before this lecture, he's told me two things. Well, I asked him that Malaysia has a lot higher birth rates, so maybe things will be different in Malaysia. And what about Indonesia? They have also a higher birth rate. In uh, Vietnam, they have different culture. And what about other? And Dr. Asher said, no, there's basically no difference about this. I mean, cultural things and the uh, religious thing, all those factors will not affect so much to Asian population aging. It's about the same everywhere. To be honest, I didn't really believe it, but I, and I have to admit, it's about the same, so you cannot really distinguish which country is which. Uh, especially in Malaysia, it's surprising. So they are... They have pretty high birth rate, okay? But because they're now, you know, a middle advanced country, a lot longer life expectancy than before, so they are all the same. They are having longer, a lot more senior citizens than before. And Vietnam, Indonesia, here, that's here they are. They're faster than Thailand or Indo Malaysia. Vietnam, Indonesia has something in common, as he pointed out. He, he once told me, Dr. Asher told me, Vietnam and Indonesia is interesting. Yes, it's becoming maturing a lot faster than somehow other. Uh, no dif different relations, different tribes, different people. Uh, why? Please, uh, I want to ask Dr. Asher later. Uh, and here's the uh, almost, uh, this is the most of the end of the lecture, okay? Uh, 
shares a change in working age population, uh, a little difficult, uh, not difficult, it's easy. Uh, I just said the year 2010, now this year is about 100. And what United Nations says uh, working age population will be after 40 years. If it's now 100, what about if in Japan it will be 63, more than less than two thirds. In India, as I told that, uh, although I told that India will see the also population maturity, but actually actual number, absolute number of the working age population will increase 40%, but it will become flat later. What about Singapore, 82? It's gonna decrease, start decreasing 10 years later. And China too, China C, 89. Indonesia, and Vietnam uh, will, hit the peak maybe 20 years later. Malaysia is about the same as India, but uh, also it will be mature. And one more thing, South Korea, uh, Thailand. Thailand is a lot more, uh, maybe developed maybe. So they will actually see no increase in the future and slight decrease later. And South Korea, uh, very, very uh, strong industrial country in the world. will actually, will show rural decrease of the working age population, pretty near to Japan, it's very shocking. But you know, Korean and Japanese resemble each other very much. And, uh, many of the ancestors come from Korean Peninsula. You know, culturally, it's different, but pretty similar. Uh, <laughs> we have a lot of similarity. Uh, it, just seeing this, you know, current topics like uh, uh, economic war between Samsung and the Panasonic, Samsung is very weak, uh, or battle with China and Japan and Korea. Ooh, what are they gonna be like that? Like, what are they gonna be like after 30 years? Mm. We all have to seek an ex export market somewhere. Last one, change in senior age population. This is the difficult thing to see. Okay, uh, if you compare the country just flat, year two, like this, year 2010 is 100, then you see all the increase, but it's not fair, because in Japan has already matured, we have already tons of senior citizens. Uh, but uh, Indonesia, you don't have. So I just made a little, little uh, change. Okay, it's difficult to understand, but this is the year that, in that, the country's working age population at the peak. Okay, this is the year Different to the different to each country, but anyway, uh, this is the year that country's working age population is at peak, at its peak. Ten years later, of the working age population decrease, start decreasing. Twenty years later, working age population start decreasing. Thirty years or forty years later, how large, how many senior citizens you have if you set this first year as the one hundred? Well, Japan start showing the decreasing working age population at the peak of 2000. So year 2040, we'll see 1.77 times more senior citizens than we have right now. It pushes up the welfare expense and the medical expense so much. But I was shocked to see all the other countries actually, relatively, all of you have more, a little severer increase of senior citizens than Japan will. Uh, I, it's because of the United Nations projection, not mine, okay? I have no idea why it's like that, but especially about Korea, they will see a huge increase because baby boom in Korea was about 15 years later or 20 years later than Japan because of the Korean War and other political situation, largely caused by the World War II and the, we have, Japan has a lot of responsibility, but anyway, Korea prospered later, a little le later than Japan, but now it's now at the peak. But then, you know, those baby boomers will be, be very long in Korea. Okay, they are healthy, a lot more powerful, eating a lot of meat. Then um, <laughs> they will live long. <laughs> okay, uh, China, Singapore, China, Thailand, they all show a little more Severe increase of senior citizens than Japan did that world. Uh, it's a very difficult thing to understand, but uh, take a look later. Okay, this is the end of the.
presentation, I just show you basic figure. I ju it's just, just the calculation for United Nations statistics. But let's gonna talk, discuss why, why does it happen? And maybe a bit about what we're gonna do. But the, what we're gonna do is, will be the, last, uh, the main topic of the last session. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for excellent time management. So we now have uh, 30 minutes for discussion. Uh, may I request you to briefly identify yourself and keep the question short. Uh, Charles? Um, thank you very much for a very interesting talk. Um, two quick related questions. Num yes. Number one, when the UN does these population projections, where do the birth rate assumptions come from? I mean, this convergence effect, does it reflect the fact that they kind of freeze the birth rates where they are, or do they kind of try and uh, predict how these things will evolve? And second question, if you went back 20 years or so and looked at UN demographic projections, how do the outcomes compare with the projections? Where have the surprises traditionally been? Thank you very much. Uh, this is maybe, I have to ask the same thing to Dr. Asher, but uh, uh, okay. I'm not a specialist about the, I'm sorry, about the demographics. I just applied the, the assumption. Okay, they show, in the UN homepage, they show also the assumption of the birth rate, and year by year. I mean, they are floating. Uh, they have floating uh, assumption of the birth rate. So they are forecasting the decrease of the birth rate somehow. But I think the, the rate for India, for example, is a pretty optim optimistic than reality. And uh, also they are, uh, have the, uh, floating assumption of the life expectancy too, and also marriage ratio. They are pretty accurate, and all are shown in the homepage. If you click it, you can check it. And I, it's really crazy. They have the projection of 195 countries all over the world. Yeah, there, there should be a ton of work. And uh, what is different? Is it different from the uh, pre previous projection? I'm sorry, I have just, I have the, I have just an expectation. I don't have the really real uh, knowledge about that. Maybe it's changed. Do you have any? We're fortunate to have a leading demographer of the region here. Meeting, you want to? <laughs> okay. Um, as far as I know, uh, previously, um, the UN assumed after a certain date that you know it were, you know that they were somehow converged back to two point one, but uh, recent times. Maybe in the before this millennium or so, I think they have made some uh, adjustments of the assumptions, and so now they don't assume that you know everybody will converge to 2.1 total fertility rate. Yeah. Look at the projections now; you will see predominance of 1.8 by 2050. So part of it is the modeling, but the the fact has also been that. The As you mentioned, there are two reasons why aging population can increase. One is the fertility rate, but the other is the longevity projection. And time and time again, you have in most countries, longevity has been underestimated. <laughs> Some, sometimes the Insurance companies underestimate longevity and go out of business, ah. like in the UK. Um, but the, m most of the actuaries and others have been uh, underestimating that. So UN, of course, reflects the best opinion at that particular point in time. There are now more stochastic and other models that are, as I understand, being done in order to improve this. So very... Uh, a uh, hardcore specialist in this area, they don't use these projections too much except as a starting point for analysis, not mechanically, certainly. Uh, yeah, hello, my name's Bill Rodi. I'm in the non-traditional security center at the Rajaratnam School. Um, you put a lot of stress on, I mean, the key factor in your projections to some extent is the working age population. The working age population is socially determined and defined and economically constrained. 
Obviously, yes. in an economic crisis, yes. that, that it changes. Yes. It has nothing to do with biology or demography. Also, if I may make just a couple of points, being 60 or 70 today is not the same as being 60 or 70 in the past. Yes. In other words, age is not a biological phenomenon either. It is also socially, uh, economically, and culturally constructed. Uh, a couple of other factors quickly. The, uh, people don't just consume. They produce. An older population is perfectly capable of still contributing to an economy if that economy is in intelligently organized. And maybe mm. it tells us more to do with social organization today than anything to do with aging. Very final point, economies grow. Even if they grow at a very small percentage rate each year, yes. compounded over the kind of time scales that you're talking about, it changes the whole picture. So India may have twice or three times as many elderly people in 2050 as it currently has, yes. but its economy will be five or ten times bigger. So could you address some of these social and economic factors? Um, because I suspect that a lot of this discussion feeds into a general crisis of confidence that exists, particularly in Western societies, yeah. uh, that everything is a problem. I don't see elderly people as a problem, nor I suspect do the elderly people in this room. Um, <laughs> I suspect they have still much to contribute to society. And unfortunately, a society that doesn't value its elderly people mm. is probably one in which people don't want to have children. Ah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I have one question. Have, did you also attended the first session too? I did not. Oh, you did not? Okay. I talked a bit about your, uh, what you're mentioning at the first session because the Japan is already uh, has been pretty advanced stage of mature, maturing. And, uh, in Japan, uh, something economists usually don't predict is already occurring. I mean, uh, then we have a discussion about why the situation is change, different in the United States and Japan. I mean, in Japan, uh, productivity is increasing very much. So that's why, how, why the aging of the working labor is compensated, actually. We don't need foreign labor to maintain the production uh, level in Japan. But the real problem in Japan, particular, is that somehow senior citizens have money, but they don't spend. That's a big problem. That's why we lack the uh, domestic demand at all. Uh, OK, so th that is the point. Uh, yeah, do you remember, this is the first one, uh, I, the, one of the figure I showed, first session. OK, uh, this is Japanese figure. Blue one is a real GDP. Actually, it's not real. It's after the deflation, uh, deflators, the multiplier, and deflators, just fiction. But anyway, uh, real GDP, so-called. It's increasing during after the first 21st century, first stage of the 21st century, because we have tons of exports. It's totally opposite to the stupid generalist report. Uh, not you, but uh, stupid generalist report that their Japan is declining. Actually, our export doubled in the first seven years of the 21st century. Japanese export doubled, okay? And uh, we had a huge increase of GDP. But our uh, domestic consumption, gross retail sales, uh, some examples, number of the books published, and uh, number of cars sold in Japan, domestic passenger transportation by car, it's a tongue claw. All are declining in 21st century. Why does this happen? Okay, GDP corresponded to many fact domestic demand. Before, at the 20th century, after 21st century, GDP is not correspond, does not correspond to domestic demand. And uh, why is this happening in Japan? It's because of net less intelligent operation of the economy, they say. But, okay, Japanese economy has been pumped up by the government spending so much. They have only 40 trillion yen income, tax income. They're spending 80 trillion yen every year. I mean, we, it, Krugman never should say we should spend more. I mean, uh, it's ridiculous to spend twice more than they earn. But it doesn't pump up the economy. Why? Senior citizens don't say, don't, don't consume. Well, I, I can argue with a lot, a lot of figures, but I don't do that. But that's a real problem. Then the other American asked the, 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 the last session, that why does this happen? Because the United States, basically, senior citizens spend more than young age in the United States. That's true. So that's a basic cultural problem. Okay, Merrill Lynch said the uh, world has uh, 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 about six, one, thick, one of the six rich people in the world with financial assets live in Japan, actually. But still, we have this situation. And I'm just afraid of having a little similar thing in the world. 
or China will remain to be United States, or will they become a little like Japan? How about Singapore? Well, is it like uh, United States or Japan? Then I, I suspect maybe it's not so extreme, but Korea is pretty will become a pretty like Japan. I mean, I mean they respect more on mat less material thing. I mean, senior citizens enjoy less material things. What about Singapore? Maybe you have somewhere in between United States and Japan. But, but the, the conclusion is the same, actually. As what you may say is exactly, I totally agree. So we have to overcome this, and somebody, we will overcome it, because we have money. So the only problem, and also we have machinery to produce many things. We can produce it. So the only problem is that we, we cannot sell it. So why don't, why don't you customize your product and services to the senior students? The, the, let them spend money. Uh, why don't you, you know, uh, just the set a welfare system that they, they feel, senior citizens feel free to spend their money without any fear about the future? Uh, all those kind of social engineering will, of course, uh, change the situation and economic, economy will grow even though the senior citizen will increase. But right now, Japan has been failing severely, actually. Can I just add that? Not everything. In economic terms, um, the elderly provide an enormous percentage of free childcare in society. Yeah. If I, if I may plug your third lecture, maybe there will be a lot more discussion. Yes, uh, yes, please. Uh, please come. Uh, if lecture. you have time, please let's discuss. And I, I, I will learn quite a lot about that. Um, Sadhvi Sharma, also from NTU. Um, I was really struck by the terms in which this talk was even framed, a silver tsunami and will we survive it? And to me, it just seemed absolutely bizarre that um, you should um, talk about aging or the number of older people in society as something so horrific. And will we survive it? Uh, um, I think if there's any indication of um, an improved standard of living or how society is just getting better and a better place to live in is uh, the uh, life expectancy. The fact that people are living longer is an indication that um, societies are developing. And, um, and I think um, that should be celebrated rather than projected as a problem and, um, you know. What is your question? Yes, yes. That's a comment, yes. and um, and to see the you know it's odd that you see the elderly as just a drain on the resources rather than much else. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's a. I agree, I agree. So, but one improvement caused the other, uh, not problem. The other thing we should manage. Okay, if you live longer, then maybe you have to fight against your own health, I and mean, you have to care a lot more about your own health. Okay, than usual. In that kind of thing, so it's not a pro we can't we should not say maybe it's a problem, but it's also something you have to care a lot more. You don't have something you don't have to care when you are young, but all the society becomes older, then you have to care it. You are not no longer young, so you have to care a lot more things. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just well, saying. even more reason for society to develop more and provide for um, an elderly po population. Yes, if you, as long as you notice the problem, then you will have the solution. I'm sure. Yes. The oldest solution, you lack solution when you don't perceive the fact. So well, my point is we should all learn about the fact, then we, let's gonna talk about how to cope with, with it. And there's always, always a way. And also don't, don't lose the good aspect of those, yes. My name is Ko Chin Hua, a member of the public and a droplet in the forthcoming tsunami. I, uh, you mentioned about learning from the past. My question is related to the past, and uh, maybe we can draw on the leading demographer here. When was the last time you had such a uh, silver tsunami in the history of the human race? And how did the human race cope with it? I, if, we, if we regard this as one cycle, when was the previous cycle, or any cycles that you can identify in the past? And what, what was done, and what uh, that changed, uh, and uh, did not lead to disaster that we are talking about. Okay, thank you. Uh, I know, I, 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 I'm gonna talk about what I know. I know about Japan's history. Uh, I've heard that China had a lot, a lot of occasions that, you, that the population doubled and they be, became higher, became higher, and up again, again, again. And uh, it's a real, real dynamic thing. Talking about Japan, 
uh, we didn't have any period of the population decrease. But during the Edo period of Shogun age, for about two, 1.5 century, we had we saw slight decrease of the population. Why? Because of the uh, the country closed its economy to the world. Okay, and our, the, our new new technology was not developed to produce more food, and uh, so uh, all the limit just this island went into kit uh, to the limit of the population at the time. So what happened is they had a lot a lot of kids, but the many kids died. All well, young people die because of starvation. Uh, it's a kind of a cruel situation. Uh, but during those 1.5 years, culture really matured. Something you see in Japanese culture really developed during those age. Not in the age of the real advancement, uh, increase of the population. Population decrease actually made very matured so, uh, kind of culture very cultural thing advanced. I'm not answering maybe directly, but, but in the human, uh, human history, there are a lot of like that, I think. Do you know any? Okay, yeah. as far as I know, the current concern with the aging of the population is because what we're seeing now is unprecedented. It has never happened before uh, that, you know, we have you know, so many older people and uh, and also together with the decline in the fertility rates and all that. So um, this is, as far as I know, unprecedented. So that's why you know everybody is trying to figure out how to uh, deal with this. Okay. Uh, my name is Daniel Teo. I'm a private uh, real estate developer. I'm very keen to promote uh, retirement housing for the private sector. But uh, up to now, I'm still facing a lot of problems. Do you think that uh, I've seen quite a few very good examples in Japan, especially Sendai and Yokohama. Do you think there is scope for Singapore to create its first uh, private uh, retirement village? Thank you very much. Uh, if it's in, in Japan, uh, in the United States, we have more problems than you have. I mean, uh, in Japan, yes, in Sendai, Yokohama, and also Izu Peninsula with a lot of hot springs, uh, also Chiba Prefecture, South Park, hot, Ome area, they have a lot of, lot of retirement buildings. Now they are building, yes, but that caused the uh, problem, uh, financial problem to the local government. Okay, because the elder people moved from uh, Tokyo to the, those com local communities, they don't pay so many taxes, so much taxes here in Japan, but they are requiring a lot of services, public services. But in Singapore, it's a single unit country, so you don't have those problems. I mean, so, based, so in Japan, because of that financial problem, the local government, uh, retirement living project is not so, uh, so, so eagerly pushed forward by local government. But in Singapore, if you build something like that in everywhere, in anywhere in Singapore, it's the same for your country. So I think you have larger chance, and it's warm, warm climate, and you have very good hospital just nearby, right? And the, so uh, you have huge feasibility. And one thing is that uh, in Japan, those people who enter to the, those uh, community, before entering the, the community, they sell their property, okay? They sell their property, they make money, and then they, they buy a new one. But in Singapore, many people have been selling HDB back to the government. Maybe they don't have so one-time cash inflow to move. So that may be a little different situation here. But if they manage to have money by succeeding or selling some properties, then you have a larger chance to have those communities. And um, one more thing, if you have a, a Japanese local government does not rely on the consumption tax. That's why they are rejecting. But elder, senior, rich senior citizens consume it. So like Florida, if they you know, consume things and paying GST, that's turned out to be maybe profitable to the society too. So uh, younger generation also admit to have them live, you know, let them live in their community because they are consuming and paying a lot of taxes. But in Japan, I, I, I repeat again, somehow it's a stupid situation that uh, Local government that does not receive directly the consumption tax raised from the consumption inside the area. Now we have to change it. Uh, do you understand that? 
is it okay? Uh, is it, am I answering your question? One more thing. You should change the traffic rule here. <laughs> uh, I think ton, more senior citizens will be threatened by car. You have so few crossing points, even though you are walking just a sidewalk. All of a sudden, you have to care about the cars turning left and right without signaling. If it's in Japan, they are all arrested. <laughs> but somehow, you have really less crossing. That's, that's something you have to improve very soon, or you will see a lot of traffic accidents caused by senior citizens. Um, actually, um, my name is Henry Chen uh, from Xi'an Jiao Tong University. I've been teaching in China for six years. Um, I'm teaching um, the human resource development. And uh, from your statistics, show that, uh, um, for example, when you put project about the population of China, um, the, um, the projections didn't take into account the uh, Chinese population actually is increasing. And to certain points of time, uh, say, uh, from the uh, statistics of the Academy of Social Science of China, they say, you know, from uh, 2025, the population will start declining. And uh, um, the, up to the, to the years 2050, and uh, the population will uh, drop below 1 billion. Ah. So how you could refigure, you know, the, um, the working populations and the uh, um, uh, senior citizens? Yes. Uh, I personally notice this in Japan that I don't stick to, I don't see so much about total population because it's deceiving in Japan. Why? Our life expectancy is so long, so now our total population is going maybe 20 years behind the working age population. I mean, before 20 years before the total population start decreasing, 20 years before that, working age population start decreasing. So that's a real problem. Okay, if you just see the total population, you will uh, maybe become a little more optimistic than reality. Just check. You know, but definition of the working age, yes, it should be changed by the situation. You know, our 65-year-old older people are not healthier than the, those 55 in Russia, maybe. So uh, we have to change it. But the social system is not changed yet. I mean, uh, you, start, you start receiving pensions after you get 65 in Japan. And also many company fires, let them ask you to leave the company after you become 60. So because of that custom is not changed, so uh, work, real working age population definition cannot be changed so easily. Uh, so you have to be very careful about working age population in China too, because Chinese people will live longer. longer. The total, not many years before the total population start decreasing, working age population start decreasing. So, Tokyo is a particular case. Tokyo area's population is still increasing. Very few Japanese notice that the working age population in Tokyo is already decreasing. But it's true. So this kind of thing is, no, no Japanese knows it, know it. That's a real problem. Thank you very much for a very interesting presentation. I just wanted to make a comment about the uh, working age population. I think what we have here, which you know, demographers use, is you know, like 15 to, through 64. And um, okay, well, as uh, older people get healthier and maybe they will work longer. And the other one is that you know, younger people, like in Singapore, you know. Practically no 15-year-old will That's be right. working. So, right. you know, the work, so the, the people who are actually in the workforce will be actually, who enter the workforce will be entering at the older ages, maybe 20, 25, I yes. think. Yeah, right. That's right. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, and I, I personally made a, some, some of our assumptions, and the, the number that explains Japanese situation best is the 20 to 65. That is currently explaining Japanese situation better than any other range. Why 65? In Japan, generally, people first retire at 60, but they continue working for less wage until 65. That's a general custom. And also, after, at the first retirement, they receive some retirement fee. It's a, like a late payment of your payment, OK? But uh, they get, receive a fixed amount, pretty much amount. Uh, at the at 60, and they conserve it, and they start so continue working until 65. So t between 20 to 65 is maybe equivalent. Yes, uh, maybe different in Singapore. You have better dedication. 
Um, you did address this particular area. Uh, Raman from... Uh, you did address this part of uh, the my question in the previous seminar, but just for the benefit of the others who missed it. Yes. Uh, the main problem seems to be contribution to GDP and lack of consumption in the part of uh, the old, as we call it, the silver tsunami. What about countries uh, where you can export goods? I mean, making up for the contribution through exports. Is it possible there should be some countries which do not have the resources? Thank you very much. Yes, uh, the last time my answer is a little short-sighted. Uh, short I mean, uh, as long as the China, India has population, just in, in, t in terms of Singapore and Japan, you have China and India we can rely on as export market, then uh, we can continue producing. But after China might get matured, only India remains, and India will mature. There's no, maybe Africa, but num uh, yeah, yes. So Singapore is very clever already investing a lot in Africa. But uh, Brazil, yes, you're going into Latin America. But population of Brazil, for example, Latin America, total Latin America population is less than Indonesia. Okay, and total African population is about half of the Southeast Asia. So <laughs> if they will double, it's not so much. So that's why we have to produce other things, way. okay, not from the quantity to quality. And also, so uh, don't ask them to drink, eat too much, but ask the senior citizens to buy something, very small portion for higher price, that's good for your health, their health. <laughs> and uh, good for your, their grandkids. Yes. Yeah, and um, yes, that's something we have to seek. Okay, yes. Um, just one question on the, the links between fertility and per capita GDP. I yes. mean, historically, you used to see a pattern of fertility going up and then peaking at some high level of per capita GDP. As I understand these projections, they're implicitly assuming the fertility rates drop off before high per capita GDP is reached. Isn't there a possibility, given the huge gaps globally in per capita GDP, that you know, if the traditional relationships work through, you will in fact see a spurt in fertility. Because we're talking about a lot of very poor countries here which are kind of cresting at the same levels as the advanced economies at per capita GDP that's multiples higher. Okay. Uh, I don't have the ability to answer uh, exactly to what you're asking. Yes, it may be. But uh, one thing, uh, talking about this United Nations projection, talking about fertility rate, well, I think the one more factor is more effect affecting more than the uh, per capita GDP, I think. It's uh, uh, somehow, it's uh, maybe the custom to live. For example, I wanted to show this. This is Russia. Uh, it's this thing, uh, pale, pale green is Russia. And blue is the United States. Okay, there senior citizen ratio will stop somewhere around here. It's very, compared to Japan and Singapore, it's quite less. Why? Because their life expectancy is lot shorter than Singapore and Japan. Why is it? Because the uh, per capita GDP, for example, of the United States is not so different from Japan, or they, it's more than Japan. Why? Because they eat too much fat, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> They write too much car. But anyway, uh, this kind of, Russia also, life expectancy is very short. They say it's because of the too much alcohol. You don't drink. So, uh, you know, this kind of thing affects, so when the senior aging stops, if you, if you die earlier because of some kind of health problem or something, that kind of cultural difference really affects quite well. Um, but I don't know which is more happier country, actually. <laughs> And uh, which is more costful? I mean, even though you would die young, then the, but at the last 10 years, you, you would get sick because of the alcohol, then maybe the public expense is the same. I'm not sure about that. OK, this question uh, relates to the projection uh, of the Singapore population. Yes. Uh, the foreign residents uh, component. Uh, component. I think implicit is the assumption that the foreign residents will become permanent residents and age here permanently. Right. Uh, 
the, the point about this is that the foreign residents could just be transitory. They may not retire here. They may just move. I just had coffee this morning with a guy who's been here 12 years. Whole family is moving back to Australia. Yes. Right. And then secondly, if they choose to stay here, they are probably the more economically well off and may not actually uh, pose problems when they retire. They probably have a, a bit more, uh, they probably are more wealthy than the, uh, than the population, the rest of the population. So the foreign resident component may not move to the, to the age, uh, from the working age to the, uh, to the old age, but uh, you could have a permanent uh, foreign resident component that is in the working age portion. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, talking about that, United Nations maybe may not distinguish, or may not, maybe, uh, apparently did not distinguish the permanent residents in the, any foreign labor. So this includes just, the, just, per, just temporary labor with no permission of the, I mean, just, uh, just the construction labor, all those things they include. So they just see the tendency of, uh, they just check the uh, inflow of the foreigners and outflow of the foreigners in terms of age, divided. They just see the inflow and outflow in terms of age, and they just use the death trend it's forever. So uh, your point is already reflected because maybe senior foreign residents have more tendency to leave this country than younger one. And that kind of tendency is already reflected in this projection. So that's why uh, you see this part, this part, number of the exceeding part will decrease. Of course, many of them die too, but it's about one, become one third. So maybe they are projecting m many foreign residents later leave this country after they get older. Maybe they will come go back to their hometown, but still some remains. Okay. Anybody has any burning questions? Okay. Can we thank our speaker in the usual way? Thank you. I'd like to invite all of you again for the third in this series. Yeah, that should be a lot more, lot more intellectual thing than I, I really appreciate your participation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, this is not academic so much, but. <laughs>